Hey, welcome back to Major Slack Attack, your first stop for clinically insane Starfield gameplay. This is part 4 of my hardcore survival mode run, playing on very hard difficulty with some extra special rules of engagement, including we're not allowed to buy ammo, we're not allowed to buy resources, and we can't use any meds that restore health. See the complete crazy details in the video description, or watch the first 6 minutes of part 1 of this walkthrough. Alright, so uh, first, some updates about the latest beta patch. Some of you are talking about this. Long story short, it completely nerfed all empty center of mass ships, including my Invincible Flying Z, which I showcased, showcased in the intro part one of this walkthrough, and you see right here. What is an empty center of mass ship? Basically, pre-beta patch, which has only been released optionally so far, okay? You have the option to download this patch. It will be um, released as a regular patch shortly, um, but yeah, for now you, you you know you're safe. But what is an empty center of mass ship? This is my uh, Invincible Flying Z. It's a basically an empty center of mass ship. The center of mass of the ship is completely empty, and the way um, space combat works previously pre beta patch is. The enemy ships would always target the center of mass of your ship. So if you take care to design a ship that completely leaves the center of mass of your ship empty, most of the ship's fire will completely miss your ship. And that was the basis of this Invincible Flying Z. And that's the basis of many other um, ship designs out there that relied on this glitch, I guess. Um, now we know it's officially it's a glitch. Yeah. So, um... My Invincible Flying Z got nerfed, totally nerfed, nerfed back to the drawing board. Didn't even see the light of day in this walker. So yeah, hardcore survival mode just got so much harder. If you want to see the patch notes for the uh, Starfield uh, 11030 beta patch, I'll put a link in the video description. And I'm just going to show you right here. If you go to that page and you do a search for center of mass, You'll see the relevant line right here. Ship weapons should now target the, the nearest module on an enemy ship instead of the center of mass. The way they worded this is really confusing. This seems to apply to your ship weapons instead of the enemy ship's weapons. Though I don't know if this was a mistake or what, but they should have worded it as enemy ship weapons should now target the nearest module on your ship instead of the center of mass. Am I right? That's the way it should have read, but um, I don't know why they worded it like this. This led to some confusion on my part, uh, along with another thing that happened on the very same day as the release of the beta patch, which was March 6th, last Thursday. On that very same day, um, Steam, the uh, video game service that... I'm on the PC version, okay? And I play uh, Starfield through Steam, the video game service. And on that same day, they released some kind of mystery patch to me. They just force-fed it to me. And as usual with all Starfield patches, they just force-fed me the patch and then only afterwards released the patch notes. But they never actually released the patch notes for that mystery patch. What happened was shortly after I was force-fed this mystery patch, the beta patch notes, beta patch notes, were released on Steam. So I mistakenly thought that I had been force-fed the beta patch, even though I'm not signed up for beta patches in Steam. I thought it was just a mistake, and Steam accidentally force-fed me the beta patch. You know, it's just the way the timing of it all went down. So I thought my Invincible Flying Z was immune to the patch because I immediately tested my ship. Um, after I'd received this mystery patch and my ship was still fine, unaware is that I wasn't actually playing on the beta patch. So then I was telling everybody, hey, my Invincible Flying Z, um, it survived the patch, it's, it's fine. Only to realize a day later, when I was playing Starfield with the, what I thought was the mystery or the beta patch installed, that some of the other features of the beta patch weren't working. For example, um, the ability to open doors while the scanner is open. Let me see if I can find that relevant part here. Scanner. Mm, 
right here. This is something else that the beta patch adds. You can now open doors and harvest with the scanner open, which is a huge quality of life um, improvement. I'm, I'm looking forward to that when the beta patch now finally becomes live. But I noticed on Friday, last Friday, that that wasn't working. So I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if I really do have the beta patch installed. So I went back into Steam and clicked the option to uh, sign up for betas. And all of a sudden, Steam started downloading the beta patch. And I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. So when it was finished downloading, I went immediately into the game, tested my Invincible Flying Z, and it failed miserably. Took it out to some heavy combat with multiple ships, failed miserably. So it it no longer works. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's what happened. So that's why I was telling some of you guys that, you know, hey, my Invincible Flying Z is safe and survived the patch. No, it did not. Now, I tested a new ship design to see if I could manipulate enemy ship fire according to the patch notes, including this ship design you see here where I created a long, high tail on the ship. The idea here is that an enemy ship that's following you will target the nearest ship part, i.e. the tip of the ship's tail, thereby drawing fire away from the ship itself. Did it work, Slack? Uh, kind of, sort of. Uh, the problem is it only works if a ship enemy ship is following you. Um, I forgot to consider the fact that most of the time ships could be in front of you, coming at your size, could be below you, could be above you, at which point the nearest ship part will not be the, the tip of the tail but simply any other part of your ship. And in effect by creating a long tail you're just creating more ship for the enemies to shoot at. So uh, I don't know, it kind of had you know mixed results. Sometimes it worked well, other times it just failed miserably. In fact, I tested about half a dozen new ship designs over the weekend. None of them really worked, you know, so it's pretty much over. It looks like uh, the empty center ship design is kaput. So like I said, hardcore survival mode just got harder. We're going to have to power level the piloting skill the hard way. That is, take a normal ship out into space and destroy 50 enemy ships on very hard difficulty without the benefit of the UC flight simulator as per the insane rules of engagement for this challenge run. Now I've submitted this problem to the major slack R&D department and they have come up with something that will help a lot with this and I'll get to that later in the video. Beta patch 11030 also introduces a new glitch where if you die in space combat the game may respawn you with double the power points on your ship and I'll try to get a clip of that in effect here. Um, yeah, some of you may be thinking, wow, that's great, you know, double the power points and it happens when I die in space combat, but, you know, rest assured, Bethesda's going to figure that out and they're going to patch that out as well. Y you can bet your, your left nut that they're going to do that, so, you know, yeah, some of you may be jumping for joy thinking, yeah, that's great. No, it's going to be very quickly patched out. And finally, um... For those of you who are thinking, hey, I want to play with that glitch where I get double power points every time I die in space combat, be advised that if you install the beta patch and then you decide, no, I don't like this, and you want to revert back to the previous patch by simply um, changing your Steam settings back to don't participate in beta, what will happen is all saves that you created while testing the beta patch will be unusable in the normal game and this is something I learned the hard way because I actually recorded parts 2 and part 3 with the beta patch installed and then when yesterday when I realized there were a few other problems with the beta patch and I just simply didn't want it installed anymore I'd rather wait until it goes live I uninstalled the beta patch and then realized all the saves that I created while playing in the beta patch will no longer work the game will complain that um, this save was created while blah blah I forget what it says exactly but it basically says you can't use these saves so I actually had to replay everything from the end of part one up to the end of part three this morning so some of what you see here um, is slightly different I have a little bit more money and my sneak is developed a little more not too much is different but you know if some of you know some slight changes 
from what was in effect at the end of part three and what you see now, that's what happened, all right? Yeah, and be, be advised that even after installing the beta patch and you wait for the beta patch to go live, they say that your saves will be good once the beta patch goes live, but some people have complained that that does not happen. They complain that after the beta patch goes live and becomes a regular patch, the saves that they made while having the beta patch installed didn't work. So they got screwed over and and had to like, you know, go back to other patches or even start the game over. So be advised, the beta patch, if you're going to install it, fair warning, it's uh, it's risky, okay? I, I'm never, me personally, I'm never installing a beta patch again. I'll wait until Mikey likes it. I'll wait to see if Mikey likes it and then I'll install the regular patch. All right, so that's the news on the beta patch and we now return you to your regular scheduled programming. Major Slack Attack. All right, we're picking up where we last left off or my reasonable facsimile, facsimile of where we last left off. Here we are in Aquila. Just finished stealthing through the gall bank. I now have, uh, I'm just short of rank four, I believe. Originally I had 29 sneak attacks, now I have 33. Um, the weapon I got from, what's his name, Brogan at the end of the Crete Research Lab. I forget what I got earlier, but now I have this, which is way better than what I got. Right, that's it. So, let's get busy. I have a modified Grendel here so we can sell off all these. I have this so I can sell that. Sell one of those. And everything else we're keeping. I wanted to keep two cutters. And I'll explain why later. If you can get your... Actually, I know exactly where you can get another cutter. So yeah, two cutters is going to be great. Spaces, I only have one. I only have one pack, one helmet, and apparel. What's going on here? Don't need this piece of crap here. And that is it. Let's sell from the ship. Nope, I already sold that. I believe I had some. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna drop those. These days, I hardly see my husband. At That's all. it. Works. Let's go to the ship. Okay, we're going to jettison that, jettison that. We got two ship parts, resources, um, cargo space is good. How about my own personal carry weight? What am I carrying? 54. I'm going to dump some weapons at the... Oh yeah, and these. These all offer damage resistance. So I'm going to keep these in the captain's locker. Go figure, beer makes you tougher. <laughs> 44, I want to bring it down to 34 if possible. That means dumping some weapons. Let me just hotkey some key weapons here. I figure the best weapon uh, for now is going to be the Equinox, largely because of the range. It's one of the few weapons that has such a long range. Yep, it's going to be the best. Okay, so you are hotkeyed. Everything else is hotkeyed just the way I want it. So everything that doesn't have a heart is going in to the captain's locker. Although it may be pointless to do this now because we're about to mod the ship. So let's do that first because everything's going to be rearranged after we mod the ship. So let's go to... Yeah, there are so many priorities right now. Yeah, we, ne we definitely need a better ship. We got the money. Everybody should have about 40,000 credits. Okay, CFG POS, you're about to get a makeover. Great time to do quick save. Got it. 
Need some work done? Okay, no problem. Okay, so I'm not gonna bother trying to create some weird tentacle ship to draw enemy fire away from me. Forget about it. It's just gonna create a normal ship. Try to make it as small as possible. And um, obviously we want some uh, particle beam weapons on it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna delete the docker, delete the three weapons for now, delete the fuel tank, delete the shield, delete this piece of crap, hope deck storeroom fuselage. What did I do? I did I did not delete the docker, I deleted the hab. That's okay. Um want a better hab anyways. Want this uh, Nova Galactic All in One Berth 2x1A, which will give us a galley, a research lab, and a bed. Okay, slap that on. Delete the docker. Now we need a way to get to the docker, so we gotta put a 1x1 one one here. How about we'll keep it in the Nova Galactic family? How about a companion way? Very good. Okay, and um, the slim docker here, put that on top of there like that. And let's move the landing gear cargo back with the landing gear back like that put horizon weapon mounts here structural horizon weapon mount there the other side horizon weapon mount here and slap on some particle beam weapons the only what particle beam weapons available now are the disruptor 3300 electron beam four of those on these horizon weapon mounts Three and four. This is going to be our main weapon. All right. Okay. What are we looking at? We're missing. I'm missing a grad drive. What I accidentally deleted my grad drive. Oops. Don't want to do that. Look for the plus sign. There's our original grad drive. Very good. And a fuel tank. A better fuel tank. This one here. Okay, so no errors except we need a shield. That's our original shield. This offers 355 shield max health. But it requires four power to generate to like operate. This one only provides 340 shield health, but only requires three power. I say this one is better than that one. So let's slap on that one. And all we have is some low mobility issues. Could slap on an, an engine here. This white dwarf engine. That'll completely solve our mobility issues. And we'll make the ship scalable. But it will cut into our profit or our funds. Yeah, why not? Okay, so now we have no issues whatsoever. If you wanted to, what you could do is uh, slap on Horizon Weapon Mount there and then recover some of the original weapons. These are not really that great, but the missile launcher, which is free, you might want to recover that for the price of 
the horizon weapon out so let's just slap that on there like that in case we want to like put some more missile launchers on it later on that one will come free and that's pretty much it this will cost us 21,865 credits that's it that's our ship I hate this cockpit but um, we're on a budget so we'll have to deal with it for now I have an error unassigned weapon yeah right just for posterity to throw that guy on that there like that and let's paint it congratulations CFG POS you have graduated to becoming the Red Baron Actually, let's not us let us not forget your roots. So let's just call you the CFG Crimson, Crimson Fleet Ghost Red Baron. There we go. There you go. Nice compact ship. I wonder if we can get away with uh, not having this landing gear. Yes, we can. Although, we, if we want to add stuff later on, that's some free landing gear. Um, maybe not. Let's just leave it on. We're good to go. Here's our new ship. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. down here to get a mission. A diplomatic visa. If you come down here and find this kind of like multicolored waste receptacles here, you can jump up here and get to the mission board here very quickly. Let's see if they have any destroy Crimson Fleet ghost missions. Yes, they do. Destroy Crimson Fleet hunt. Something I never knew you could do. I mean, after... 600 freaking hours in this game. 600 hours in this game. I only realized yesterday you can reject missions. So um, this is huge. This is huge because uh, playing as we are with these rules of engagement, we have to go out and destroy 50 ships out in space to um, power level the piloting skill. This is, in fact, this that is um, Gauntlet of the Galaxy number two, is to max out the piloting skill without using the UC flight simulator. Um, you often come up in these scenarios where you go on one of these uh, destroy Crimson Fleet missions, right? Okay, you go out there and you arrive at the scene of the crime and there's a half a dozen ships there. And you're looking at that going, there's no fucking way, pardon my French, there's no way you're gonna be take, the, take them all down. This is where the invincible flying ships came in handy, you know? This is where like the uh, the Invincible Flying Z would have excelled, but we have to assume that even though I no longer have the beta patch installed, I want to make this walkthrough patch proof, so it will eventually go live and it will eventually be applied to everyone. So we have to prepare for that. So I'm not even going to use the Invincible Flying Z or create any kind of Invincible Flying Z. Let's just assume that that is off the table. Um, so you're in that scenario where there's a half a dozen ships and what to do? Because if you just run away, right, you're still stuck with this mission. And what happens is, if you don't do these missions, the mission board won't respond. It'll just be the same missions here until you actually do some of the missions. However, um, let me just take another mission for demonstrational purposes. Take on this mission here, okay? However, you can actually reject missions. I never knew you could do this. For example, this mission right here. I never knew that there's actually an option down here to reject it. So this mission board only offered up one Crimson Fleet, destroy the Crimson Fleet mission. I prefer to have two, but this one's taking up the space. So let's just reject this. And then all I have to do to get the mission board to respond is to sleep 48 hours, sleep 48 um, universal hours. 
more specifically, you have to pass midnight twice, so it may not be precisely 48 hours, maybe less. It could be potentially just 25 um, universal time hours. Let's just see how long we'll have to wait. Sleep or wait, either or, doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, universal time. This is pretty much best case scenario. Let's just sleep. And all we have to do is pass midnight universal time twice. So that's once. And then as soon as it passes midnight again, we can cancel and that mission board will respond and provide new missions. So that is huge. Because I was wondering how in the world are we going to destroy 50 ships if we come up against a scenario where there's just too many ships to destroy. You have to abandon the mission, but then you're stuck with a mission and the mission board doesn't respond any new missions until you've done the missions that you got on hand. The only other option in that scenario would be to go to a place where there's guaranteed, be, guaranteed to be a lot of um, enemy ships would be all there, but then that has problems of its own because it's just too damn hellacious to deal with all there. I forget where Altair is, it's somewhere around here. Yeah, Altair always has enemy ships. They even There's a guy in the game that even warns about that. Okay, so let's go see if the mission board responds and we can get a second Crimson Fleet Ghost mission. And then we'll take this baby on its version run, see if it survives. And we'll be on our way to um, leveling the piloting skill. Huh, it did not, um... Okay. Maybe I didn't wait long enough. At any rate, let's just do this mission and see what happens. The pup. Interesting. And I should have set up my weapons and whatnot first. I always go for the most powerful weapon and destroy the weapons first. There we go. We got another guy here. As you can see, I'm taking a lot of damage. Oh, I forgot to buy ship parts. And he's boosting. Got him. Great. Okay, so. My grab drive took a lot of damage. One thing I don't like about having to, like, um, trying to, to salvage that missile launcher is it puts an extra weapon slot here, which then kind of, you know, gives you more slots to, you know, deal with in heavy combat, so I don't know, I think I might actually just delete that missile launcher. Alright, so, we're on our way. Now, at the very least, new missions should spawn at the mission board here. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes. Alright? Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it.